It's funny how Trump isn't uh, making threats about uh, his charges of uh, taking documents from the government uh, like he is with the uh, hush money payment case uh, making threats of death and destruction. Former President Donald Trump's lawyer is testifying before a federal grand jury today in Washington. That's right. This is part of the Justice Department's investigation into classified materials found at Mar-a-Lago last summer. At the same time, the New York City grand jury is mulling an indictment of Trump in a separate case they are not expected to meet today. Uh, that case covers uh, the campaign finance issue involving hush money payments to Stormy Daniels during the 2016 presidential campaign. That panel is expected back in court on Monday. See He's also being charged in Georgia for uh, election interference for trying to get the governor to give him a certain number of votes that he was looking for. And that's on uh, phone. CBS News political correspondent Caitlin Huey Burns joins us now from Washington. So Caitlin, how are all these investigations impacting Trump politically? Hey, Elaine. Well, there are a lot of investigations, and sometimes you need kind of a whiteboard to map out all of them because it's very confusing. Uh, but there are also lots of layers to this. Let's talk first about this, what has been known as kind of the Stormy Daniels case. What we've seen, and that's in New York, what we've seen over the past several days as Trump has teased an indictment, and we're still waiting for any word on that, we've, we've seen Republicans really rally to his defense, even those who have disagreed with him on some elements, um, kind of using this to argue that it's a uh, issue of political overreach um, and a political kind of um, indictment, uh, potential indictment. And that's interesting because you are at a time where Republicans are trying to figure out how to um, govern, how to kind of potentially move on from Trump, but also include his base and not to get too distant from him uh, politically. Um, so that's that's an argument there. But some of these others, you know, remain to be seen. Um, the documents case, as you mentioned, is also one that the former president has taken to argue that the judicial branch has, um, you, know, you know, is going too far. Of course, we've also learned that uh, there have been um, documents cases involving the current president when he was vice president and former president, sorry, former vice president Mike Pence. So, it's complicated. Right mm -hmm. now, the view from the Trump team is that this is something, the at least in the New York case, is something that could embolden the campaign. But it's also worth noting that, you know, politically, no one wants to be running for president while under indictment. Mm -hmm. uh, that's traditionally not a good place to be. No. So the politics have to kind of play itself out, um, but it's a much longer road. Right now, Republicans are rallying to his defense. Whether there's an appetite to stick by him as these other investigations continue remains to be seen. And Caitlin, you bring a good point about it being just not a good look. Speaking of optics, uh, President Trump is holding a rally this weekend in Waco, Texas. Some of us will remember three decades ago, the Branch Davidian um, massacre, more than 80 people were killed. It was a conflict with mm -hmm. the federal government that led to that. Um, well, yeah, Waco, Texas, he's probably trying to, you know, drum up the most cultist cultist of followers for him for himself what can you tell us about why the trump campaign is choosing to hold a campaign there now well errol it's a really good question the campaign has dismissed those parallels arguing that waco is a centrally located place in texas that a lot of candidates have campaigned there a lot of republicans have spent time there um, but it's hard to ignore that kind of symbolism because some of Trump's supporters have pointed it out, especially in light of the investigations that we were all talking about. You've seen yeah. a lot of his supporters, especially those on the far right, um, really evoke this kind of um, federal overreach sentiment in their support for Trump. So those parallels have been drawn by those who are supporting him. Um, and this is going to be a significant rally because it's actually the first that he's held since announcing his run for president. What's been interesting to to watch over the course of his um, new campaign is that he hasn't really done any sort of big campaign events. He's had a couple of campaign events, but largely he's been operating um, from Mar-a-Lago.
Mm. And so this is going to be the first time that we see him in this kind of environment. Uh, we'll see kind of how he talks about this potential looming indictment um, as he has been over the past week and trying to raise money off of it as well. Um, and we'll also potentially hear from him from his supporters about what they think of this broader landscape. We also know that, uh, you know, he has Ron DeSantis in his sights. He's been talking a lot about him. The, the Florida governor has also been kind of weighing in on Trump as well. And so that is a battle that is certainly heating up as well. Yeah, a changing political landscape. Waco, by the way, not far from former President Bush's sprawling mm -hmm. ranch mm -hmm. in Crawford, Texas, a place I'm well familiar with, having covered the Bush administration. Yeah. Caitlin Huey Burns in